Hello, welcome back. All right, right now we're, what we're going to do is look at what we've been used, what we've been learning about with the equations of motion, in particularly acceleration, and see how we can apply that to an example problem. So here's our problem. You have a current with a velocity entirely in the meridional direction. We remember, of course, that meridional is the north-south direction. So our velocity, we'll call that v. So assuming your velocity v is a function of x, y, z, and time, write an expression in terms of u, v, w, x, y, z, and t for the total acceleration. That's capital D, V, D, T of the current. All right, so we are going to review exactly how we get this total derivative. So we've got D, capital D, V, D, T. And we remember that V, we're told here, is a function of X, Y, Z, and T. So what we're really doing is taking the derivative with respect to time of v, where v is a function of x, which could vary in time, y, which could also vary in time, z, which could vary in time, and time itself. All right, so we need to take the partial derivative of each of those variables and apply the chain rule in order to get our total derivative. So our total derivative will be with respect to time is going to be equal to our partial derivative of v with respect to x. And we have to apply the chain rule so we're going to then multiply that by the derivative of x with respect to time. It doesn't need to be a partial because x can't vary in y or z. Then we'll add that to the partial derivative of v with respect to y times dy dt, taking our chain rule again. And then we'll add that to the partial derivative of v with respect to z. And taking the chain rule again, times dz dt. And then our final partial derivative will be the partial derivative of v with respect to time t. All right, so as we look at this, we notice a couple things. One thing that we notice is that right here we have dv dx dx dt. dx dt, that's actually something that we know. That is how x is changing with time. And how the position changes with time is its velocity. The velocity in the x direction we know is u. Now if we look at our next term, we see dv dy times dy dt. dy dt is the change in y with respect to time. And we know that that is just the velocity in the y direction, or v. Now we look and we see that we have dv dz dz dt. dz dt. And we know that dz dt is again a change in position with time, so it's the velocity in the z direction, which is just w. So the total derivative, rearranging our terms here, I'm going to start with this term right here, the dv dt. 
So I write this as capital, my total derivative capital D dv dt equals partial dv dt plus I'm going to put the velocity in front of the other of the um, of the partial derivative so I get u dv dx plus again I'll put the velocity in front so that'll be v dv dy plus w dv dz. All right, so I've answered part A. Part A asks us to say, to, to put the total acceleration, dv dt, in terms of u, v, w, x, y, z, and t. All right, so let's look at part B. If the velocity is steady in time and constant in x and z, and varies only in y as v equals 0.23y, where y is displacement in meters from the initial position, find an expression for the acceleration. All right, so the first clue that we get, the first important thing that we get here in part b is that the velocity is steady in time. That means that dv dt is zero. Now it is also constant in x. So that means that the partial derivative of v with respect to x is zero. And it's also constant in z. So the partial derivative of v with respect to z is zero. And so we end up with a very nice, much simpler expression that we can deal with. So our total derivative of v is going to be equal, in this case, to just v, partial derivative of v with respect to y. All right, so now what we know is that v equals 0.23y. So we're given that v equals 0. 0.23 times y. So I need to get, I need to find, figure out what the partial derivative of v with respect to y is. So I'm going to take the derivative of this. So dv dy, and the derivative of this expression is going to be just, as we know from calculus, 0.23. Two, three. The derivative of 0.23y will just be 0.23. With respect, we take the derivative with respect to y. So I know the value for my dv dy, and I can plug this in right here. I can plug this in right here for dv dy. And I already have my value for my my v as well. So I can plug this value in right here for v. And so now my total dv dt equals point two three y times 0.23. And that, I can, if I put that in my calculator, I find out is equal to 0.23 five, two, nine,
Why? So we found out what our expression for our acceleration is um, in terms of in terms of y. Now what we want to find out is what is the velocity at a point two meters from the initial point and what is the acceleration at a point two meters from the initial point. And so I want to keep what I have down here but I want to get some more space so let's go up here We'll erase some of this since we already know this. All right. So the first thing that we're asked is what is the velocity at a point two meters from the initial point? And we know that the velocity, as we have right here, velocity, we know is equal to 0 0.23 times y. So our velocity at a point two meters from our initial point is going to be equal to 0 0.23 times two. And that will be equal to 0.46 meters per second. Now the next part of this question asks for what is the acceleration at a point two meters from the initial point? And we know that our acceleration is equal to 0 0.0529 times y. So that will be equal to 0 0.0529 times 2. And so we end up with, I'm going to put this in my calculator and round, we end up with 0 0.11 meters per second squared. So that is my acceleration at two meters from my initial point. And this is my velocity at two meters from my initial point based on what we, what we heard about our current. All right, I hope that's clear about how we can look at the total acceleration